Hey everybody and happy Halloween. Um, I'm actually filming this on the night before Halloween. I've been cleaning my apartment and now I'm gonna bake a cake, which is probably not a great idea because it's pretty much just gonna be for me because uh, I've decided to stay in this year, but my sister slash roommate was invited to a big party over in the New England area at the estate where I believe they filmed the exteriors for the original Dark Shadows. She's been sending me pictures and videos. It's extremely cool. So yeah, and I, I usually would go down to 6th Street and check out the tons and tons of gorgeous ladies in amazing costumes. Um, I just opted not to do that this year. I'm already kind of regretting it, um, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna order pizza. I'm gonna watch Charlie Brown, Hocus Pocus, Trick or Treat, stuff like that, and have my cake, and that's gonna be it. Yeah, it's a terrible idea. Hopefully next year I'll be partying 6th Street or the East Coast with my sister. I don't know. But <laughs> that's the plan. Yeah, I tried to get a date to come over and hang out with me and eat pizza and watch cartoons, but Craigslist did not pan out. Uh, neither did OkCupid okay or FetLife or anything else. Uh, oh well, never does. So here we go. We're going to start baking this cake. Okay, guys. So this is not going to be a big deal. Um, Obviously I use box cake mix, so it's not some kind of great chef thing. And uh, it's really just about showing this little cake that I like to make every year. Um, I used to make it every year. My sister used to have friends come over, and so I would lay out this big goodie table and I'd make this uh, Halloween cake. And I, I, I just think it's a really cute and cool little cake. So I wanted to show how you, how you make it, um, or at least how you decorate it, because there's, there's not a lot to it. It's just, it looks really cool, I think, when it's done. So here it is, it's very simple. Uh, first, you just bake the two layers of the cake and uh, one layer is devil's food cake. So get a box of cake mix and I like to use Duncan Hines because I don't know, I just like Duncan Hines better. And uh, red velvet is what I use for the bottom layer. And uh, two cans, I like these 15% more cans of, uh, I call them cans, they're not cans of uh, chocolate frosting and of course to uh, to uh, to make a layer under your uh, cake in the pan there you know what do you call it uh, to make the cake pop out of the pan you need vegetable oil and flour to make a little coating and uh, the non-stick coating there you go the non-stick coating <laughs> and of course you will actually use some oil in uh, your cake and also eggs uh, three eggs per box, so six eggs. I forgot to pull those out, but yeah, I'll get those out in a second. Six eggs and all this stuff. This is the decoration stuff. It's super simple. It's coconut that's shredded, of course, and uh, food coloring that is for the coconut. All you really need is green, but you want a nice normal green. You don't want like a like a pastel Easter-y kind of green. You want one that's like real green because it's to make it look like grass and the tombstones so there you have this is a really cool thing now i got this wilton cake decoration thing and this actually comes with little bones too and you can actually write on the tombstones i don't know what these are made of i'm assuming they're edible candy tombstones i don't know i've never gotten this before what i used to do is i would bake cookies in the shape of tombstones and I would uh, make some gray frosting and I would just put frosting on them. They were sugar cookies with gray frosting and I'd just make them extra long and then I would stick them into the cake. And uh, it looked really cool. And I'll, also I could make them into different shapes like angel statues and, and cookies, uh, I mean uh, tombstones and uh, you know, just different kinds of cross tombstones, different kinds of tombstones. And uh, it looked really awesome, honestly, and I'm not going to do that this year because there's a problem with that. When you do it that way, the moisture of the cake starts to soak into the cookie. And a lot of times, it didn't happen every time, but most of the time, late in the evening, usually sometimes earlier than that, the cookie would break. It would be soaked and it's like sticking your cookie in milk and it would break. And, you know, then you got like... and it. You know, it didn't look as cool as it sounds, like broken tombstones or something. It just looked like a broken cookie on top of your cake. So I don't do it. I'm not going to do it that way this year. And if they didn't come up with this, I might not have 
you know, gone back to making this cake, but I've been waiting for something like this for quite a while. And I heard they had them last year, but I never, never really saw them. So hopefully these things are long enough to actually stick into the cake. I don't know how that works. We'll find out if this works at all. This is going to be a new thing for me. So that's pretty much it. It's this stuff plus six eggs, which I forgot to pull out. Okay, so uh, I'll be right back to mix everything together. Okay, guys, I have greased and floured two square pans. Now, you don't have to use square ones. It actually would be easier for me to use round ones because I have a round cake uh, container and everything. But um, I just think this graveyard looks better when it's square. So <laughs> I did two square pans and just a thin layer of oil that I rubbed all throughout the inside of the pan and light dusting of flour on each pan. So it's pretty basic stuff. And I've started on my red velvet cake. This is pretty simple. I've put in the cake mix. I've put in three eggs, a cup of water, and a third cup of oil. So that's all you do there. And I'm going to stir it up. And I'm going to pour it into one of these pans. Then I'm going to repeat the procedure. Yeah, it's exact same directions. One cup water, third cup oil, three eggs for the devil's food layer. And then I will pour it into another pan. Then we'll put them in the oven and we'll see how that goes. I swear that red velvet cake mix is the goriest thing I've ever seen. And here we go. We're gonna pour this into the pan and we're gonna redo the same process with the devil's food. So there you go, that's the red velvet layer. Pop it in the oven and make the devil's food. And the awesome thing is, I don't have to rinse out this pan, uh, this bowl, or get another bowl for the devil's food. I just make it right in here after I dish out all the all the all the red velvet here. Uh, yeah, I just start making the uh, the devil's food in there because it's okay if it mixes, because that's kind of part of the idea. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Okay, here's our devil's food. It's got three eggs in there. Cup of water, third cup oil, same deal. And the, uh, of course the cake mix, first thing I put in. So we're gonna stir it up and then we're gonna put it in that other pan. Okay, now you know how to do one of the easiest things in the world, baking a cake from a box. I do, for the record, know how to make cakes from scratch, but uh, really, these box cakes are delicious, so yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll be back with the instructions on how to decorate. Okay, I got them out of the oven. Now I am going to take the red layer out. I'm going to set it down upside down. I'm not going to have a rehash of the mistake I made last time. So the, uh, the second layer I am not going to turn upside down when I put that on. But first, the red layer, I'm going to flip it over, put it on this plate upside down. And uh, then I'm going to put the chocolate frosting on it. Now I'm going to let it cool off a little bit, but I'm not going to let it cool off too much because I like for the chocolate frosting to soak into the cake a bit, especially on that bottom layer, because it sort of makes the, uh, when you slice it, when you slice this cake and you have a chocolate layer on top and you have, well, you have devil's food on top, you have red velvet on the bottom and they sort of blend together. The colors, the the, uh, the dark devil's food color, and then the red velvet, and it just looks like it's you know going from from like graveyard dirt to like blood or something. It's it just looks really cool. So yeah, hopefully it will come out as good as it usually does. We'll we'll do that right now, and uh, I'm gonna let it cool a little bit. Then I'm gonna put that frosting on it, and then I'm gonna put the devil's food layer on top, and uh, that's what we'll do right now. 
and I will probably let the devil's food layer cool a little bit more before I frost that one but I still like to to have them be a little warm because I do like that frosting to soak in it makes the, the cake a little bit more moist and like almost like it's got a little pudding like texture to it but not not throughout it's just it, it makes it extra moist so yeah gonna do that right now and here we have the red velvet layer frosted fully now I'm gonna be honest I actually didn't let it cool I just flipped it and frosted it because <laughs> whenever I do let it cool it um, usually cools too much and then I don't get that soaked in effect that I want so yeah I just flipped it and frosted it sometimes uh, well, usually the reason I, I, I've been thinking about letting them cool a little bit lately is because uh, when you do frost it, when it's warm, all that frosting tends to run off. And it looks cool for a while, but sometimes too much of it runs off and it gets out of control. But actually, this, this time it wasn't a big problem. So, yeah, it came out fine, even though I, I didn't let it cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that frosting will soak into the cake pretty good because the cake is still, still pretty hot inside. And it didn't get out of control. Now I didn't put the whole, the whole thing. Now, if you want to put more frosting, you might wait a little bit after this and then put more. But um, there's gonna be a lot of frosting on top of the cake. It's no big. And then you just, you know, you have any leftover frosting in the refrigerator, you can always put that on the side of your frosting nut. With this uh, chocolate frosting, one does tend to like to have extra frosting because it's super good. But yeah, there you go. Now I'm gonna put the, uh, the devil's food on top. That's gonna be a little trickier. I'm gonna have to sort of, usually what I do is I, I take it out of the pan into my hand and then I flip it over here and I have to do that real fast because you know, you, your hand's not that big and it'll break over, over your hand. But another way to do it is to flip it over into a, onto a plate and then that's probably a more sensible way and then flip the plate over onto there. But because, uh, yeah, I do want the top actually on top this time because the uh, red velvet is upside down. Uh, the flat surface makes it easier to put the next layer on top. And, uh, and I do still want this one to be pretty warm when I put the next layer of frosting on top because, yeah, I mean, it's just better when the frosting soaks in a little bit. So, there you go. I'm going gonna, gonna to get started with that next layer super easy that cake both of those cakes came out super easy you never know if you're gonna if you like put just the right layer of uh, you know of uh, coating on the pan because sometimes it sticks but yeah that came out super easy and maybe it's just me sometimes I screw it up but <laughs> when you get it looking nice and like you know the way I showed it before that's usually a good sign it's gonna come out right Sometimes you put too much oil or whatever, and then you don't know what's going to happen. But yeah, now, now here's the tricky part. See, it's starting to slide off of the bottom layer. You, you kind of have to stick around and make sure that it doesn't do that. Put it back into place. Because that's the trick about when the, uh, the cake is still warm. And you put it onto icing. It starts to slide out of place. So you just got to slide it back and keep watching it. If I leave the room, I mean, this cake could be over here on the counter, <laughs> the top layer. But yeah, I'll, I'll keep a watch on it, and then I'll, and I'm going to frost it. And uh, then we'll get into the decorating stuff, which is really easy, really not much to it. Wow, that frosted up really nicely. Everything is going really well, really quickly, which is starting to make me really nervous, because usually I screw something up. But <laughs> right now, this looks like a delicious... Devil's Food cake with uh, red velvet on the bottom layer. Looking really gorgeous. Now, before, uh, before it cools off too much, or before the, um, before the icing gets too dry, I want to uh, add that coconut. So what I'm gonna do now is get a bowl, put a bunch of coconut in there, and uh, add some green food coloring and, and a couple of drops of water, two or three drops of water. And I'm just gonna, do that you know with it until it's it's nice and green and if I have to add a few more drops of uh, food coloring I will and I'll try to film that if I can I'm using one hand to hold the camera and one hand to do stuff so that's why I usually cut and do things off camera but and as you can see 
The second container of icing, I didn't use that much. There's a lot of extra in there. More than half a can of extra. So there you go. For anyone who likes it on the side, they want more icing. Okay, get started with the decorating. Here we go. Okay, I've put about maybe almost half my bag of coconut. Uh, that was like a 14 ounce bag. So I've put maybe almost half of it in a bowl here. Not quite half, but I think it's more than a third. I don't know. So I've got my green food coloring. I'm going to put some of that in there. I'm going to be generous with it. That might not be enough, but we'll see. I'm going to add a little water to it. Okay, I added some water. It was probably more than a few drops. It was probably, uh, I let it run in there, very thin light stream, just really quickly. I would have shown it, but uh, I've got dirty dishes and everything. <laughs> so I put in some water, uh, just a very little bit, and it's just to make the, uh, the food coloring go further. Now I'm just going to mix it, make sure your hands are clean. Oh, even though I'm the only one who's probably going to get any of this cake. I could take it to work on my day off, but I mean, I don't really want to go to work on my day off on Halloween. So basically, you just stir it like this. See, it's getting greener and greener. It might end up needing more food coloring, so you just add more food coloring. Make sure those really dark spots get mixed up. So far, it looks like it's for an Easter cake, but you just add more food coloring. You don't want to add too much water, so I probably won't add any more water. You can probably get away without using water, but I find it helps a little. Yeah, I'm going to add more food coloring, and I'm going to keep doing this, and I'll show you how the finished product is. Okay, I think that's probably green enough for me. I mean, maybe it'll get greener if I keep adding food coloring, but uh, it's pretty. it's pretty green. I, uh, this is my first time using this gel Betty Crocker food coloring for this per for this particular cake. I'm not sure if my uh, my grass used to get greener. I feel like maybe it did with the regular food coloring. This is like I said, this is the gel kind, which is a little bit easier to control. But yeah, I feel like it used to get a little darker green, but it really doesn't matter. It looks like grass when you put it on there. Watch this. This is basically what you do. <laughs> Just sprinkle it all over there. Yeah, it starts to look like grass on on dirt. And this is how it's done, and I put it on the sides too as best I can. And then I uh, just uh, insert those tombstones. So I'm going to continue doing this, and I'll show you how it's done. And then I'll show you putting those tombstones on. All right, here we go. It actually looks a little more green in person for some reason than it does on the video. Actually, uh, I'm fine with that green. I mean, our grass doesn't get too green sometimes around here. <laughs> it's actually greener than I thought it was going to come out. Looks pretty good to me. I think when I get the tombstones in, I'm going to be really happy with it. But yeah, I think if you just like add more food coloring, it'll get darker and darker. But I like it. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to take a look at these tombstones here. I've never used these before. Apparently you can write on them. I have no idea what I'm going to write on them. And probably some fictional character names or something. Maybe put Dracula on one and Wolfman and stuff like that. But that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do now. I probably won't film myself trying to write. But uh, I'll tell you how difficult it is and I'll show you the, the finished product. Okay. Here we go. I actually thought I might as well film this. Uh, I just pulled this out of the package. So this is how it looks right out of the box. It's wrapped. It's in this uh, container here. You got the bones. I don't think I'm going to use the bones, but I don't know. Maybe I'll use a few for some added effect. I've never had that before. Uh, they, I don't know. Maybe they're like sweet tart kind of things. I don't know. Hard candy of some kind. I noticed this tombstone here has a crack in it. Hopefully it stays together, but actually there's supposed to be quite a few in here. I believe it says... Looking at the box, it says 12. I think they're talking about 12 tombstones. So there must be two in each of these uh, little sections. And uh, so that's probably more than I need, although these are also smarter than I, smaller than I'm used to using. I'm actually hoping that these show, because they're not very long, and you have to stick them into the cake. So that's kind of weird. We're going to see how this works. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to unwrap them and take a look. 
Okay, guys, so I opened them up. Uh, I took out the tombstones. Now, on the back, they're kind of rough. On the front, they're nice and smooth. Uh, I went ahead and wrote on them with a little pen. A little, it's like a little marker, and I guess it it uses edible ink. I have no idea. And it has their little hard candy, uh, these little bones. I have no idea what they taste like. Let me try one. Wow, they're really hard. And they're, you know, just little hard candies. Um, I'm not going to try the tombstones because I'm going to save these. I don't know when I'll use them again. Yeah, those, those little bones are just sweet. They're not very tart at all. But yeah, I, I, I wrote on one of these little tombstones, on a bunch of them actually, and I put them in there. I, I used about six of them. So I used half the package. Um, and uh, here's the finished product. So uh, this is uh, how the graveyard looks. And I'll be honest, this looks different from my usual graveyard cake because what I used to do when I would use cookies is they were they were big I mean they were like big tombstones and I would have you know one two maybe one two three and then one two I actually put more in there with the big ones but uh, this time I decided to go ahead and put a few of those little bones in there I don't know if I like it with the bones because why would there just be bones laying around I guess it's a really old graveyard I don't know but I, I mean overall I like the cake I think it came out nice um, I went ahead and wrote things like, and I just kind of gave it a Disney theme for, for no real particular reason. I mean, I'm a huge Disney fan, and I kind of wanted to do the Madame Leota one. And then I remembered at Universal Studios a year ago in the Bill and Ted show, they had a bing bong tombstone in the backdrop. So I just sort of did a bunch of Disney stuff. I did Thackeray Banks, Han Solo, Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, Madame Leota's from the Haunted Mansion, and then uh, Old Yeller. <laughs> so... Um, and, you know, I guess I could have put another row in front, but it wouldn't have made sense because you got bodies here, right? So, I don't know. <laughs> I also don't know why there's a dog buried in the human cemetery. Well, why is Bing Bong in the human cemetery? I don't know. Well, Factory Binks is a cat. Well, not really. Well, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so this is the final product, and I am pretty happy with it. And uh, I think as it got, as it's set, it, it almost seems greener. I guess when the tombstones are in there... I, I really love the way it looks. Um, I am used to having bigger tombstones and I'm used to them having different shapes. But at least these, I don't think these are going to soak up the moisture and, and come apart on me. I don't know. They might. But yeah, overall, I really like this tombstone cake. Uh, this graveyard cake. Which is, uh, like I said, I used to make these all the time. Looked a little different. Did not have any bones in the yard. But it, it still looks cool. It's a little weird that there's bones around, but I thought might as well I've got them. Might as well put them on there. And it looks cool. It looks creepy. It looks Halloweenish. Um, of course, the tombstones don't have to be perfectly in a row like that. I just kind of try to do it like a real cemetery. I kind of probably should have done one row back a little further and then put two in the middle row and then three more in the front. Just so I could have had more. Because the more, the cooler. But... Since they make them all look exactly the same, you know, there's, it's not going to matter much, I guess. And I would have had to think of uh, more names. But, <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. And uh, on the box, you see they have a little cupcake. And, you know, that for some, that might be a better idea. And uh, it might, the tombstones, since they're kind of small, they might have more effect on a cupcake. But I, I really think the, uh, the green, um, the green uh, coconut really adds a lot to it. That's kind of pl plain and just chocolate frosting on there. It's kind of boring, but yeah. But then some people don't like coconut. So in that case, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You can take vanilla vanilla icing, white icing, and dye that green. But Or there's probably other things that you can use for this shredded effect. And that's the finished cake. And I'm going to take this over to the big table. And uh, I might shoot another video. I keep wanting to say tomorrow, but by the time I get this posted, it will be Halloween. Technically, it's 1.47 in the morning. It's already Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. You'll probably watch this later anyway. But yeah, uh, maybe I'll shoot a video, another one, before Halloween is over. Uh, I don't know if I'll just be talking about stuff. I don't know. I wanted to do a video on my favorite Halloween specials, but I might have to save that for next year because... 
that would be a long video of me talking and I want to see I want to make more of my Halloween specials fresher in my mind before I do a video like that and maybe uh, Ashley will be in on that one so save that one for next year I guess so yeah go watch our uh, midnight hour review it's only been up there for a few days it's very cool we're getting costumes for it and everything and uh, yeah, like and subscribe and comment. And I'll see you guys next time.